Good day, everyone. So I thought I'd do a little uh, video here about building a C++ Lambda function. Uh, there's a whole suite of ways that we could do this. Um, we could go, which what I'll show you today, where we're going to build it on our local PC, package it, and then deploy it through a CLI. Um, one of the problems we have with that is that because the Linux environment that I have is not going to be the same as the one on, on Amazon, um, we're going to have to package all the dependencies so the executable becomes very large. Um, Whereas if I actually could match it, I wouldn't be, need to um, package all of those uh, dependencies. Um, so another way around that is I could either, of course, go to something like Cloud9 and build it on the AWS environment itself, on the, uh, the AMI that's going to be used during the Lambda function. Or I could go and um, have a Docker on my uh, PC and then deploy that AMI in that Docker on my PC and then build it that way. Or even another way would be to make a Docker image itself and then deploy the Docker image into the um, Lambda function. So a number of ways to do this. Again, we're going to do it the first way. It's not necessarily the best way, um, but it's probably the one that people would be most familiar with to start. Um, so all of this information is here in this particular repo. They put together a really, really short, small repo. Um, it's based heavily, and I mean heavily, off of this much larger uh, repo that's here in AWS Labs. Uh, just kind of picked and choose some uh, specific things and uh, that I'm more interested in. So I've already gone through these dependencies, installing some of these dependencies. And these are the type of things, again, that may be an issue where you wouldn't have to do if you were actually in the right environment. Uh, but I've already gone through them. So I'll kind of pick up here. And before I can get into building the actual Lambda function, we actually have to build and uh, install these two uh, sub packages, which is the SDK for C++ and the uh, Lambda runtime itself. So with that, I've deleted everything from my machine and I'm doing everything in uh, WSL2, which is super sweet. And uh, so to start off, let's just go and let's make an install directory. Make the install directory and then we're just gonna clone these libraries down. Okay, so now that's all cloned. Let's just go inside and build it. Obviously, if we were doing this for real, we would script this, but it's kind of nice to do it manually uh, once just to make sure you know, understand each of the steps individually. Um, and also when we're going in here, I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier or not, but I'm putting everything, I'm installing everything into an install directory just right in my root, and then I'm just cloning everything directly in the root. Obviously, you probably want to pick somewhere different, uh, but I'm just keeping it simple for this. Okay, so now the CMake is done. Let's just make this. One of the other things I really like about this uh, make package is that it uh, not only knows to build it, but after it builds it, it actually goes through the full test suite. Uh, to ensure that the build was done properly. Um, it's a really nice feature, I think. Okay, so now that it's built and tested with 100% uh, score, which we know, so we know it's all good, we can actually just install it. And boom, there it's installed. So let's go out and um, do the same thing now with the, um, the Lambda runtime. Okay, that was super quick. Okay, and again, it's going into that same install directory, so we're going to have everything all installed up into that directory. Again, super fast on this one, much smaller, and make, and we make it stop. Boom. So now we have our two dependencies, and we can go down now and um, install the actual package. Um, actually, one thing I forgot to put in here, which I will put in, is the cloning of the package. So let's just grab this. I'll update the readme file. There we go. Mm. 
again, very, very similar to what I did before with the other ones. Let's go back into this readme file just so I can make sure that the readme file is done properly. Okay, the build was good, and sorry, let me just move this over. Do the make. Now this extra last command here is actually a little bit, it's a bit of a special. Uh, not only does it uh, do the, uh, the building of the executable, but it's also zipping it up and getting ready to deploy as a, uh, a Lambda function. So you'll see here we have this demo.zip. Uh, if you wanted to go into the console, you could just go and upload the zip file to make the uh, Lambda function. We're actually going to do everything with the CLI. And some of these commands get long, so let me just do this. Go sideways here a little bit. Hopefully that isn't as confusing. So one of the things we're going to do is uh, we're going to make some uh, roles for this Lambda function. Again, this is things you could do through the CLI but uh, or through the uh, console, but it's nice to do it here. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is create a JSON file, uh, or a JSON file, I should say, um, to make a role. So let us, and actually one of the things I will do here as well, just to kind of, it's kind of nice when you're just doing some code editing, is you can actually open up uh, VS Code there uh, directly from the, um, the console. Uh, makes code editing a little bit simpler. So if we go into the build folder here now, uh, one of the things are we're going to want to, and you don't have to be in the build folder, it could be anywhere at all, anywhere at all um, is we're going to make this JSON file. So let's go and make a JSON file. And we're going to call this JSON file trust policy. Okay, so we have this trust policy. Let's just grab this JSON code here, super generic sort of JSON code, right? And okay, so now that we got that, this is just the CLI commands, first set of CLI commands we're gonna start to get into here now. That's gonna create the role. Um, oops. Oh, I'm going to the build directory. There we go. So we made a, um, and one of the things you are going to need is this ARN here. And I'm just going to drop this, that ARN into this little file here just to keep it ready. Uh, now that we've got the role created, and actually let's just jump into. Uh, I should have showed this at the beginning, but there was no Lambda function. Let's do a refresh. There we go. So now we just created this Lambda um, demo uh, role that we're going to use. And the next thing we're going to want to do is, uh, there we made it. Now what we're going to want to do is attach policy. And this is so that it could go and write stuff out to the CloudWatch ro uh, logs. So this just has to go just like that. Okay, and if we go in here now, just to go back, oops, go back to CloudWatch or into AIM, and we go into it, we can see now, let's give ourselves a little refresh. There we go. So we just attached that role that just happened then, pretty close to automatically. Sorry, I keep closing that window. Um, and then we're ready to deploy. Oh, and I'm sorry, uh, there we have to deploy. Now this command here, which I'm gonna copy into this little window because we have to update something and that is the ARN that was given to us reason, uh, previously. So let's drop that into here. So as you can see what it's doing is it's gonna create the Lambda function, it attaches the role, 
Um, it also, you know, gives us some sort of information about it, you know, time every 15 minutes, memory size, that sort of good stuff. And it's also this zip file. So that was what we made just previously. So let's push that in. And while it's going in, we can see that we don't have any Lambda functions yet. And that's just uploading that file. Uh, we can see actually that the file is, um, is a decent size. Okay, perfect. There we have success. So now let's do a refresh. Boom, we can see the demo thing that we just showed up. So you can see it was 13 megs. Uh, it's pretty big for a Lambda function, which especially this one, which doesn't do a whole heck of a lot, but it's because we're grabbing all of those other dependencies and pushing it up. So now that we got that, we could test it. We can either test it in at the CLI like we normally did, but here we just, or I'm sorry, into the uh, console. Um, here we're going to, actually before we do that, I'll just show you what the code is. So if we jump back here, we can see maybe just show you to CMake really, really fast. Uh, for those that might be interested, you can see that here's the where we added the two packages and then everything else is, is pretty straightforward um, stuff. And the code itself is super, super, super simple. We can see we're just taking a request, which comes in as a package. Um, we are then, and this is why we had some of these extra core things. It just enables the use. You don't have to use these, but certainly makes using the JSON a lot simpler. Um, here we take that re request, the payload that was in the request that we're going to get, and I'll show you the payload in a second. And we just make this um, JSON request out of it. And then with that, we can see, first of all, was the request successful? If it wasn't, then we kind of give it a uh, return a failure. Uh, however it was, we can just create this view, which is, again, it's another object a little easier to look at. Um, and now we check to see if the key location is in there. So it kind of, again, JSON really looks very much like a dictionary. So if they, is the location key, does it exist? Yes, if it exists, then we're going to go in here and we're going to pull out, um, we're going to make a response, which in itself is going to have a key of given location. And then the value is just going to be simply what got passed in, right? So we're just going to kind of feed it back to us. Very, very simple kind of hello world. And this one is just, of course, if the location key didn't exist at all, then we should get this error saying, hey, location is not in the payload. So this is very, very simple code. Again, this is more of just a hello world type of uh, example. But let's go in here and let's try to invoke it a few times and see what happens. Let's see. And so I'll just break this down again. We're just Lambda we're invoking the function name. So if you had a bunch of Lambda function, you could do it here. Um, this is a new, this is the version two. You have to actually uh, give it this uh, object because the payload is different now than it was previously. Um, and then the payload itself, which again, is just a JSON, which is again, very much similar to a, uh, for those in Python, this is you know kind of a dictionary you're passing in. And then the output back is gonna be captured in this particular file. And actually before we do that, I'll just go to CloudWatch to show that right now there's no uh, CloudWatch uh, logs or anything created, but when we start running it, and if we go to the Lambda function itself, if we go in here, um, we don't see any sort of executions um, happening yet. So let's go back, let's execute it a few times. Um, so here we can say it came back, it ran, it got the uh, status code of 200. And let's just cat out that output file that got created. And it just says given location is somewhere. So again, we, we give a location of somewhere. So that came back properly. So let's do another one here, for instance. And uh, instead of saying location, let's just give it a weird key. And uh, it still came back as in 200 because it, it knew how to handle it. Um, but now if we look at this file, we'll see that location is not in the payload. So our, our Lambda function worked properly and I handled that particular error that came in. Um, and then if we go in here now, we went to CloudWatch for instance, we do a refresh, we can actually see that the CloudWatch uh, log actually got uh, created for it. And we can start seeing the requests. It's in five minute, uh, five minute increments, so both of them got caught in the same request. Uh, we can see how long it took to run. Um, the first one took a lot longer than the second one. I guess that must have been the loading and then it can uh, do the fast uh, starts after that. So the first one took 16 milliseconds and after that it took, you know, a fraction of a millisecond. So we got billed for a millisecond. Uh, so you can see these charges are, are basically nothing to execute. Uh, this is, of course, the beauty of um, a uh, serverless sort of environment that um, 
the actual runtime. We don't have to sort of spin up any EC2 instances. We didn't have to do anything like that. Very, very simple to run. Um, just seen here. This is another way you can kind of see the CloudWatch metrics. We can see that we ran it twice very quickly. Um, very, very simple sort of stuff. You can obviously put in a lot more interesting uh, things if you wanted that. But that's uh, 15 minutes, a little bit longer than I, I normally like, but it shows how easy it is to go and create that. And then we did it from scratch. We also built the environment and everything else. The next one, obviously, we wouldn't have to build the environment. Um, not a big fan of actually building the environment locally. Um, so we're probably going to look at some other ways to do it as well, using either Docker or using Cloud9. Cloud9 probably will be the next one I will try. Uh, the beautiful thing of that is you're in the environment. You don't have to do anything local on your PC. This is pretty easy because I'm doing it on my personal PC. Um, not every uh, organization allows you to just install things like I did. So if uh, you don't have that ability, Cloud9 is a nice place uh, where you could go and build out that tool set without having to uh, worry about all of the uh, installs into your local workstation. So with that, thanks, and hopefully uh, you found it interesting. Cheers.